In this episode, I'll be crossing the North Sea over to Denmark. And joining me on the trip is my childhood friend Jorgen, a farmer who can't seem to stop talking about his produce. And Frick, my brother, who seems to catch a break anywhere he goes at any time. And his friend Daniel, aka Mr. Sixpence. Together we sail to the island of Rocht, along the coast of Jaren down to Egelsund, before making the crossing to Tuvoen in Denmark. My first charge. I came with the boat my first year. I didn't have a chart plotter, so I would just use this for sailing around. But won't be needing them now. Now it's all set. Just waiting for the crew. Oh, I'm gonna give it that little million. Nah, I don't know. We're not clear. Yo, yeah, we're just going to go back here and then. Here we go. You must wash up before you get the whole thing done. Ja, du har skjønt for harde livet de siste... Ja, se på fingrene mine, de er såre. Jeg har vondt. Ja, hvor er det? Har du noe gøy å fortelle om valget av tekstil og mønster? Det er et veldig spesielt design. Det var billig. Det var rester. Jeg skulle ønske jeg var rik. Så jeg kunne kjøpe et helt kopp. Ja, ja. Det var fred. Det var masse lommer da. Ja, men... Jeg leste nettopp noen gamle historier her fra Rått. Det var det strålende. Jeg synes ikke dette er verdig å ha med film, altså. Jo, men vi tar det ikke tenkes med. Men nå er det kanskje når du fokus på av... Ja, ok. Nå skal jeg klappe igjen. Du kan få den grønne vesten hvis du vil. Ja, det er jo kjedelig. Det kan være jeg må slå til, jeg vet ikke jeg. Det blir noen krangler etter hvert om det er mesten der. Det er kvart her nå. Snakke på engelsk til kamera! Ja. Det er kvart her nå. 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 Men det er kvart her nå. Det er ok. De boys skal ha fail for å tell her. Det er kvart her nå. Og det er det nordmost punkt som jeg vil se for et år. Fra her og nå, sør alle vei til Canary Island. Her går det så det suser. Så nå må vi snart holde på hatten. Nå er vi 2,2 knop. Altså dette er en sort som heter Solanebba. En gammel landsort fra Gjæren. Og den høster du i dag før du dro, hørte du? Ja, det var i går kveld. Så var første nedbå i år. Ja, vi tannet den også. Nei, vi tannet alt nå. He says you can't be four people in a 22-foot boat. Skrekkfilm her nå. Ja, det gjør det. Kommer de for å ta oss? Ja. Det er altså helt sykkud. Jeg har vært lovlig å bøte meg selv opp alle dag, for at det er vinden som er nordlig. Vi har besluttet å ikke sjøle, men nå ser jeg den store vallen der der. Her er det. around watch we're currently using the gas outboard for the dinghy to make some headway because there'll be a southwesterly wind later in the afternoon we want to get past Rieva here before the wind starts and pushes us out there's also a current moving over all these shallows with shifting sandbanks we're at 58 degrees north and this is actually the furthest south I've ever been with my boat Ja. Og så finner du noe på andre veien. Ja. 
Well, this seems to be an orca or a pot of orcas coming our way over there. Well, we're neither in Spain nor Portugal, so we'll probably survive. We've been fishing quite a bit in the Arctic. Orcas, do they taste good? Yeah, very, very good. You eat them raw with your teeth. Yeah. So we had a discussion five minutes ago. We're out of food. But we got a fisherman tiny, aboard. Tiny, tiny, tiny fish. Nice. Hello, Finn. Like that. Good. So we had a little uh, incident right now. Uh, I just found out that if you want to dump off your piss from a bucket, you should probably do it on the side where the wind isn't coming directly at someone's face. Yeah, because what happens if a poor soul takes the helm from you when you do that? Well, they get piss all over their face and they puke. Yeah, they do. Luckily for me, I've got a lot of spare change. Forever the inventor. I hate this so i made this <laughs> and you approve as a fisherman yeah it's good that's how you do it south of svalbard yeah kind of well, this place is brusan it's the southern part of jaren so we've cleared the entire coast now and we're currently running on the electric engine we pretty much lost the wind now the wave action has died down as well you do like that life jacket no <laughs> but it's practical yeah but i prefer this yeah, this looks cool. Or the AHC. No, not really. I'm just lazy. Let me have it. Come and come and come. All synke me. Thank you, synke. Okay. Yeah, that's just my cousin dropping by, living here in Sireborg. Hello. <laughs> Hitler was obsessed with preventing a British invasion of Norway, partially fueled by information he got from double agents. So the entire coast of Western Norway was fortified. So here's the spot. It's got those dreaded stairs. All right. It's time to get the lamp out. And I'll just leave this bag here for posterity, since I'm not gonna leave a body. Guten Tag. All right, this will work. Just gonna check. Oh, fuck that. I'm not going down there. Nope. Not alone. Not unarmed. Melon. This one ain't dry. There's a kid with one entrance, but it's flooded. I mean, of course it's flooded. So now I'm just gonna have that scary back door leading into God knows where. This looks like a traditional bunker. So, probably a crawl space. Yep. This place doesn't have any super scary underwater holes leading to God knows where. So this is my best bet. Through the years, I've slept in a lot of weird places, including trenches and caves, but never before a bunker. See you guys tomorrow. I didn't sleep very well, because this place started filling with water. I got soaked, and then I was dreaming about that dark hole in the bunker all night, wondering what was down there. So, I'm gonna go check out that dark hole, just to get it off of my mind, because I really gotta see what's down there. That's probably the door that's locked off. I wonder where it leads. Oh, that no one may tell. Well, that was interesting. Wonder where I end up now. Yeah, I'm all the way down. Back up and get my backpack, I guess. 
Time to backtrack. Now all that Minecraft gaming will come in handy. Right. And then left. Crouching down. Now I can sleep well at night. So we managed to leave the harbor, which was quite a maneuver on this tiny electric engine. But with a crew of four, we had everything covered. Jorgen untied the lines to the sheet here, which had got entangled by God knows what. Vic pulled the sail up, and Daniel, he's practicing how to be seasick in a rolling sea. So, Mr. Fisherman, what do you say? It went excellent, yeah? And now, perfect win. Proud of the crew? Yeah, yeah, it went good. <laughs> Today, we're just gonna sail down to Egelsund, and in Egelsund, Egelsund, I must say, I think I'm going to back next day, five. And in Eggleston, we're gonna resupply. We're gonna get fuel for the two stroke outboard, and we're gonna get lots of food and motion sickness pills. I'll go up top. So we cleared some headland here, and we found an inlet that we're gonna try to sail into because honestly, we don't have the engine power to do anything out here. We're approaching Engelsen. Looks like our gamble today paid off. Hey, there's a knock in there, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's it. We're going to go to the parking place. Okay, do you want to go to the master? We're going to go to the land. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It's not so good. It's not so good. It's not so good. It's not so good. Cooking dinner, getting ready to leave. <laughs> and it's all clean in the engine bay, thanks to Mr. Sixpence. Yeah. Oh. It's time to set a course for Denmark. Then you go to the north. Catch them up on this side of the north school. Two Oh, yeah. I got that one away. Okay. And that's Norway in the horizon. Yeah, into the north. Egelsund, where we left. That's Haugedalana, and down there's Lista. And that's Lindesnes, southern point of Norway. Um, I'm gaming. That's Zelda for y'all. Unfortunately, Nintendo has failed to give us the Wind Waker on the Switch, which would have been a more fitting game. But I guess Breath of the Wild, they can find a raft. That's all that remains in Norway, in the horizon. Well, it's gonna be a long year. Say 30, which means we've been 24 hours at sea and we'll soon be crossing into Denmark. It's actually shallow enough here to anchor. It's sand and it's only 40 meters deep. The sea's really calm, but now we're sailing into a uh, slight headwind. It's southerly today. So, doing three knots and it's 41 nautical miles left. We've uh, kind of struck our colors. We're in international waters, so it's just flying a red flag. But it doesn't have a tugboat, so it can't be rushing. 
festival, men har budt velkommen til. Men, men, men det er i hvert fald We're making headway, slightly off angle. Pretty close halt, but all in all, I've been doing two knots for a couple of hours now. Start seeing cumulus clouds forming on the horizon, and they only ever form over land, at least around here. Which means that's Denmark over there. Now we'll actually have power to navigate into the harbor. It's a bunch of Panamax ships dropping by here. They seem to be missing us by chance. And that's a light out. Took us a while to actually film it. <laughs> but that's land. Time to strike our real flag and hoist our colors of convenience. <sighs> We're in the shallows, trying to enter the harbor. And these dolphin looking creatures have been escorting us for a good half an hour. There they are. <laughs> we forgot about the tide. And this basin is massive, so we got a two knot head current. So I'll get there tomorrow, something like that. 